All right, so the next CSS transform function that we'll take a look at has to do with increasing or decreasing the size of a given element. It's called scale. As you can see a quick example here. The syntax is very similar to what we did with translate. So we have transform, colon, and then a function that we pass in. In this case, we're not doing translate x or y. We're going to work with scale. And there's also scale x and scale y, which we'll see in a bit. But to start, this simple line, transform colon scale 2, is going to double the size of all divs. So it increases the x and the y dimensions by 2. Let's hop over to CodePen and play around a bit. So I have two divs here, or excuse me, two paragraphs here, uh, both with the text hello inside, one with the class transformed, but it's not transformed yet. The only difference is the background color at the moment. So they're both 50 by 50 pixels. One of them has a teal background color. The font is this white, doesn't really matter, and there's a two pixel border. That's there for a reason that we'll see in just a bit. So transformed, the class, only has a different background color. Now we're going to actually apply a CSS transform to scale it. So again, the syntax is transform, colon, and then a function, not in caps, and in this case, we'll do scale, and if I just pass in a single number like that, you can see it immediately grows to twice its size. Now we'll talk a bit about why it's being cut off, where, you know, where it's going, and how the scale is being applied in just a second. But I just want to show that you can do things like 10. Notice that, if you can see this, uh, everything in this paragraph, every aspect of it has been scaled, including the border. It's now 10 times larger. And the font, the text, it's a bit hard to see. It's very hard to see. It's basically gone. Now it's being cut off. But you can see a bit that's been increased. We can also go the other direction and shrink it. There we go. It's half as large. We could go very small if we wanted to. Very, very tiny. But if I zoom in, you can actually see it's still there. The text, the border, it's all there. Okay, so that's the very basics of scale, uh, where we can apply the scale evenly across the x and y. But we can also do things like this, only scale across the x-axis. So the height remains the same, everything in the y-axis. If you look at, uh, take a look at the border here, this is the original border dimension on the top and bottom. But our border on the right and left, well, you have to trust me, on the left, but on the right that we can see has doubled in size. So we're stretching it, we're making it twice as long. We could do the same thing for y if you wanted to. Now it's twice as tall, twice as long across the y-axis. So you can do those individually. Um, you could also, you know, we can shrink it and make it half as tall. But you can also combine them by just doing scale and passing in two values. So rather than doing two to double it on the x and y to basically double its size overall, we can pass in a comma here and then a second number, let's say five. So this will make it twice as long across the, or scale it by two times across the x-axis, and scale it by five times on the y-axis. So it's five times as tall. Or we could go the opposite direction and shrink it across the y-axis and elongate it, double it on the x. So that's really it to scale on its own. There's only scale, scale x, and scale y that we're concerned with. And with scale, you can pass in a single number like we saw. Let's go with something big, how about seven? That will increase it by sevenfold, scale it seven times, um, or we can pass in two numbers, like three and five. So rather than doing scale X and scale Y separately. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about has to do with where the origin of the transform is happening. So if we go back to our double, double across the X and Y, Notice that it's getting cut off, right? We don't see the left border. We don't see the left part of the H here. What's happening is that it's taking the initial origin here, which is the middle of this uh, paragraph, right about there. And it's scaling it evenly from there. So it grows outward to the right, to the left, up and below, top and bottom, I guess. We can change that. So what we could do instead is say, I want the scale to happen from right here and grow two times this way and two times that way, to the right and down. The name of the property we care about is called transform origin. 
And there's a ton of different ways to use it, as you can see here. So we're not going to go over all of them or even most of them. I'm just going to point out a couple of things we can do with it. So if we go back here to our double scaled transformed paragraph, if I want to instead change the transform origin to this top corner here, that coordinate is actually zero, zero. So I can transform it again and give it a transform origin, zero, zero. And what that will do is set the origin to this point right here. So that might be slightly different than what you expect. Uh, zero, zero in the CSS coordinate system is the top left. It's not down here, but this is zero, zero. As you can see, let me reset it again back to here. This doesn't move. This stays flush right there. And it scales this way and that way. So I'll uncomment both of them. And there we go. It scales. Okay, so we can play around with that as well. You know, if you wanted to, you could give it an, a coordinate here, any coordinate. Um, but another thing that we can do that's even simpler is just give it a direction, like left, right. We could even say center. Um, and that's where it will scale from. So I could say transform origin is left. And what that will do is basically say transform from the left side, but it doesn't specify top or bottom. So it's going to keep the center for the Y position, but transform it from the left side for our X, if that makes any sense. So essentially, if I go back and uncomment that, initially it's transforming from the center out in both directions from the middle. But then by saying transform origin left, it's going to take the X component, the X scale, and do it from the left side over here. So it will still move up from the middle and down from the middle, but it won't move left and right from the middle. Instead, it will move from the left side. So I could also pass in a second value here, like bottom. And now it's scaling up from the bottom. So it's scaling from the left and from the bottom. Or I could do left top, which is the same as zero comma, or no comma, it's the same as zero, zero. Just like that. We get the same result as left top. So if we change this to right, it scales to the left from the right side. So the origin is here now, and so it's scaling that way. So we could do the same thing just to wrap this up. If we pass in two values, let's say we double it on the X and we shrink it on Y. Now what I can do, instead of right top, let me just show you what it looks like without changing the origin. So from the middle right now, it's shrinking from the middle and then doubling evenly to the left and to the right. Now if I go back and let's change the transform origin to now be from the left, we see the entire thing because the two here, the double, is happening from the left, this direction. But we could also say left bottom. And now the shrink, the, the scaling down, is happening from the bottom and it's shrinking towards the bottom. Because we passed it a value that's less than one, it's shrinking down. So if I change this to be five, it now overtakes everything. The bottom stays the same, the position and it scales up way up here five times. So let's do three instead. And now you can see the text scales like that. And just to hit this home again, the default is going to be center. You often do want things to actually scale from the center. That's a logical way to scale them. But if you're worried about things overlapping, or if you're trying to apply something in a particular direction, transform origin can help you. All right, so that's it to scale. Just to recap, we have scale on its own with one value, scale with two values like this, and then we also had scale X and scale Y, along with transform origin. All right, 